market prospects, delivering timely information and education to prairie farmers for over 30 years. Market Prospects is brought to you by the University of Saskatchewan's Department of Agricultural and Resource Economics and these sponsors. Log on to marketprospects.usask.ca to view past programs and for information on upcoming programs. Well, Saskatchewan is a trading jurisdiction and most of what gets produced in this province is exported. This week on Market Prospects, a look at international trade and trade agreements. And joining us is Dr. Bill Kerr, Distinguished Professor, Department of Agricultural and Resource Economics, University of Saskatchewan. Welcome, Dr. Kerr. Hi, how are you doing? Well, right off the top <laughs> then, what is the importance of international trade for Western Canadian agriculture? Well, I mean, in general, Canada, I mean, we hear an awful lot about some of our trading partners. Like the, EU, the U.S. and China and so forth, but in actual fact, Canada is the biggest trading country in terms of the proportion of our income that's earned. Right? So, you know, we're about 30 percent of GDP, where uh, China's maybe about 22 percent, and the U.S. is way down there at 13. So it's really important for us. And of course, with agriculture, about 50 percent of everything we produce in Canada is exported. So. Having market access for our products is, is really, really uh, important for, uh, for our prosperity. And essentially, the only way we get good market access is through trade agreements. They're never perfect, but they're a lot better than the alternative. So what long-standing trade agreements is Canada currently involved in, and how do they specifically impact Western Canadian agriculture? Well. Uh, it's essentially, uh, the major trade agreement that we have is the NAFTA, which, you know, created very good market access in the United States and Mexico, which are markets which are about 10 times in value and more than 10 times in population the size of Canada. Uh, I mean, everybody belongs, virtually everybody belongs to the WTO, 162 countries, but what one would like is to have better access than all of those competitors and for Na in NAFTA we had better we have better access than almost all of our competitors so in specifically in terms of the western canadian um, agricultural industry it really the NAFTA really allowed for the livestock industry in particular the beef industry to expand up to the point where we export about 40% of the of our production which has grown a lot and where it was about 10% before, right? So, you know, I've been around long enough since uh, before NAFTA, and it, it was a very, you know, a sea of change, and, you know, and then brought along with it the, the feed, the barley, and all of the other things that go with a very large expansion under NAFTA. Bring us up to date on the impending trade agreements that uh, Canada's involved with. Okay, well, one of the things is that since 1995, when we signed the NAFTA, we've signed a number of agreements, but they're really, really small. Yeah. They're only about 13 percent of, uh, of uh, the size of NAFTA altogether, and only about 30 percent of the population that we get access to under, under NAFTA. So for 20 years we haven't done very much. Now there are four very large agreements that we're involved in. Uh, one already negotiated with South Korea that's coming into force, a long, coming into force with a long uh, phase in. Uh, we've of course negotiated the deal with the European Union. The, we have uh, also uh, negotiated the Trans-Pacific Partnership, and we're a long way down the road uh, negotiating with India. Uh, so those together, uh, if they all come, if they all come to fruition, would be a much bigger uh, market, uh, about one and a half times the value of the market of NAFTA and about five times the population of NAFTA. And for agriculture, the, you know, the income's important, but also just the sheer size of the population that we would have access to if all those four new agreements come into place. So, you know, NAFTA was a big, you know, a significant change for the Canadian economy, and now for the first time in 20 years, we're in a situation where there could be another extremely large change. How do we ensure that agriculture has a voice in these negotiations? Well, I, I think in actual fact that, that our negotiators have done a, 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 pretty, a very good job. 
uh, both depending on, on what the priorities were. I mean, clearly uh, in the European agreement and the Trans-Pacific Partnership, they managed to maintain supply management, which was a priority for the government. And they've, you know, got some quite good market access for some of the products uh, uh, like beef into Japan, where the tariffs are going to come down from nine percent to, or from thirty-five percent to nine percent, over a phase in, and uh, you know uh, a couple of quite large new markets uh, in terms of Vietnam and uh, Malaysia. So, I think uh, you know the negotiators do a good job, you know, but it, they are negotiations. I think uh, in terms of the Trans-Pacific Partnership, while we will get better market access, we're going to have some strong competitors who are also in the Trans-Pacific Partnership. Australia and New Zealand produce a lot of the same things that we do. And the U.S. Uh, will also get better market access for their beef into Japan. So it, it will still be up to Canadian firms to be, uh, Canadian farms to be competitive in those markets. But compared to the rest of the world, we will have better access. Well, great information. Uh, thank you very much for taking time to come on FarmGate. Okay, thank you. We'll take a break again. We're back in two minutes. Please stay with us.